Savage broke the grandfather away. That was, if you remember, that was the computer in the tech age. So that was a whole different world that we just aren't going to find anymore. So this year in the budget committee, I, start, I stand up and I do my speech. Now it's just the Republicans, because that's the way we meet Republicans meet Democrats. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and I'm standing with Republicans and there's like eight or nine freshmen on the other side of the room and I do my little speech. I go, let me explain something. You're never going to see me here again. I'm leaving. I've already said, I'm running for governor, I'm leaving. But seven years ago, I sat in those seats and I was told we're going to balance the budget in 10 years. And seven years later, seven years later, we're still not close. You know why? Because we don't follow a budget. So the only way we can ever fix this is to start cutting mandatory spending. And we better take a big enough slice out of it this year <coughs> to finally be able to fix the system. And, but I, and I go through this whole thing, and I'm, and I'm thinking, they're probably thinking I'm crazy. But I go, remember me in seven years. I want you to remember there's a crazy guy that stood up here and told you this is the only way to fix it. You've got to cut spending. So I was surprised because Tom Cole, who's been around for like 25 years, he gets up and says, I thought he was going to get up and start saying Jim's wrong. He would get up and said, you got to listen to this guy. Because he's actually telling you the truth. We don't cut spending, and we better do it. So here's what happens. I make, the, I make a push that I'm not voting for anything, and I finally get a whole bunch of the budget committee members to agree to this. We're not going to cut. We're not going to. We're not going to vote for a budget unless we cut 500 billion out of mandatory spending. 500 billion over 10 years, by the way. That's 50 billion a year. That's like throwing a bucket in the ocean, by the way. It's not very much. And everybody's starting going, I agree, I agree. So next thing you know, the chairman of the committee comes back. I'm, I'm giving you some inside information, but it's interesting. The chairman of the committee comes back and says, the best we can do is um, $12 billion. I go, well, who said that? I go, well, that's what the speaker does want to do more than $12 billion. I go, and I stood up and said, when do we negotiate with the speaker? We're our own committee, and we need to stand strong and make our decisions. Next thing you know, the speaker gets a little worried because he's got a rat. He's got a guy in the in a budget seat now trying to rebel rouse or whatever you want to call it. But I wasn't a rebel rouse. I'm just telling the truth. And uh, anyway, we negotiated 240 billion of mandatory cuts. First time ever that mandatory cuts. And by the way, it was in reconciliation, which means it would have had to happen. It would have had to happen. And we get that pass out of the house. Guess what happened when I went to the Senate? They removed them. So the answer to your question is yes. The only way we're going to fix, no matter what anybody tells you, the only way we fix Washington, we've got to get growth, which is what the tax cuts did. I'm sure this tax cut program will give us 1.5% to 2% growth. But at the same time, we've got to cut spending. So I promise you, as your senator, I'm going to make sure we do that over on the other side, which probably won't make Mitch McConnell or anybody else happy over there. But I do think that's the answer. So thank you for the question.